Though something new in my life, new in my life, something new in my life, oh Lord. Though something new in my life, something new in my life, though something new in my life, oh. session your songs are prayers unto the Lord sing from the depth of your heart for there is going to be a divine visitation today supernatural impartation in your life touch me one more time oh Lord the touch of salvation the touch of healing, the touch of deliverance, the touch of elevation. Yes, the touch of the master. Visit me, dear Lord. situation. Look at your condition. If you are here this morning and you need something better, can I see your hand up? Something better. Something better. Amen. It's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. And you are going to put that to God in song. And you are going to say, Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. I am praying. Move me higher. I support out your heart to the Lord. You know, I know some of you are wondering, why is it like this today? Because you are used to the motion, doing things the same way. But God is going to turn things around in your life. I said, God is turning things around in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. And I say, 
Move me higher. Move me higher. Oh Lord, I am tired of this love. Oh Lord, I am tired of this love. Oh Lord, I am tired of this love. I am saying, move me higher. Oh, move me higher. Oh Lord. begin to tell the Lord you want a new level, a higher level, a glorious level, an heavenly level. Father, move me higher. I have no power of my own. Holy Spirit, I am begging you, move me higher. Whatever area of your life you need elevation, promotion, the Lord can do it. The Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. Until you are tired of where you are, you never get to a new level. Until you do something about your current level, you never get to another level. Oh Lord, I am tired of low living. Oh Lord, I'm tired of this suffering. Oh Lord, I'm tired of barrenness. Do something in my life. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. I am the level of singleness. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. The level of joblessness. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. The level of always begging and begging. The level of penury. I, am I hope you are putting out your heart to the Lord. Oh Lord I am tired when you come to the presence of the Lord, you must go with something. Oh Lord, I am tired of when you come to the presence of the Lord, you must go with blessing. Oh Lord, I am tired of this you must have a proof and evidence of visitation from the Lord. Tell the Lord. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Oh Lord, I am Tell tired the Lord. of this level. I am saying, move me higher. Oh, move me higher. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Oh Lord. Him right now. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Oh, oh 
Lord, I am tired of this level. I am saying you be higher. Amen. Amen. Precious Lord, we are grateful to you. When you we know you are the God of new things. You have promised to do a new thing. And today, Lord, we declare, in our lives, do something new. Amen. In our situation, do something new. Amen. In our families, do something new. Amen. Lord, something that the world will see. Something that will baffle our world. Something that will glorify your holy name. Visit us as individuals. Visit us as families. Visit us as a church. And bless us beyond our imagination. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. Today is a special day in your life. Because something happened, something special is happening in Jesus' name. Last Sunday, I gave you an acronym. I told you, you are something. How many of you remember? And I told you, when you leave here, tell somebody who you are. How many of you remember what that thing is? Amen? I can see very few hands. Wave the hand if you remember. Yes. My little son over there, tell me, what is it? Yes. Say, let, let them hear you. You got it? Let them hear you well. G D. What does that mean, everybody? Oh my goodness. All right. Now I know why you are the way you are. Praise the Lord. Somebody say G B. Somebody say G B. Generational blessing. I am generational blessing. And so you will be in Jesus' name. You know, you have to remind yourself of certain things. Don't just remind yourself of the pain and the sorrow and the trouble and the crisis you are going through. Those things will weigh you down. But speak things positive to yourself, to your life. Remind yourself all the time. Who is this individual standing here? Who is this person talking here? Who is this person doing this? I am a blessing. And the more you see yourself a blessing, the more blessings come your way in Jesus' name. Who can remind us what we spoke about last Sunday? The topic of the sermon now. Yes, sir. Freedom from heathen causes. From heathen causes. And I told us that there are some things happening in human life that you don't easily know the root cause of it. But the sheaf of them all is sin. Sin. It's much easier for people, many people, some people, to do evil than to do right. And they do not know and understand that every seed we sow grows, germinates, and bear fruit. I pray that evil fruit will not grow into your life in Jesus' name. We looked at quite a lot of things that brings causes into the lives of people. We looked at the Gibeonites in particular. That one little thing, simple thing, that an ordinary person may consider, consider insignificant lying. is what brought a cause not just, of, not just upon the people that lied, but upon their whole generation and generations to come. And so they became a cause to their generation. But by the power of the Lord, you will be a blessing. And if there is anything you have done that is not just affecting you, but maybe affecting your children, your family, and your generations to come, will death with them last Sunday, we're still going to deal with them again today in Jesus' name. Today, and I told you last week, that I shared those things with you not to hold you bound, but to release you. To get you the freedom you need so that you can be who God has ordained for you to be in Jesus' name. I told you also 
that God created us to rule, to reign, and to have dominion. If you are to rule and to reign and to have dominion, how come then that you are under perpetual bondage? That is over in Jesus' name. Today, I'm getting to the second phase of that message. And the message is made for more. Can I hear somebody say that? Lift up your right hand and say in the name of Jesus. I believe that God created me to accomplish much. I am made to do more, to get more, to give more, to live more, and to live long. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Made for more. Made for more. You know, when you are on that course, you can't do much. When you are on that course, you are limited. But when you come to that understanding and realization that I am made for more, that quest, that knowledge, that understanding begins to get you to getting some things done. That makes you to begin to look at yourself different. That makes you to begin to realize and to remember that after all, I am not poor. Can I hear somebody say that? I say, can I hear somebody say that? Can I hear somebody say that? And you will not be poor in Jesus' name. There are people that have conditioned themselves to their condition. Some people that have concluded some things doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I do or what I don't do. What is going to be is going to be. No. You've got to do something about your situation. You've got to do something about your life. You were made for more. You were made to be better than who you are. You were made to do more than what you are doing. You were made to make more than what you are making. You were made to be better than who you are right now. And the Lord is changing your situation in Jesus' name. Jeremiah got to a point in his life and he cried out in the 32nd chapter of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 32 verse 17. He says, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too difficult for thee. There is nothing too hard for thee. There is nothing impossible possible for you. And I come here today to declare to you that nothing shall be impossible with you in Jesus name. Paul the apostle came to that understanding and realization and he declared I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And I'm here today according to Paul in that Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 that you can do all things. I say you can do all things. That then means you can do better than what you are doing right now. You can be a better Christian, made for more, made for more, made for more. Whatever level you are, academically, spiritually, materially, matrimonially, financially, you can be better and you'll be better in Jesus' name. You know what is limiting many people, hindering many people, holding back many people? It's unbelief. It's unbelief. Please let me quickly tell you, anything you can see with your eyes, look around. Just look around. Look around. And imagine what can you see around. What can you see? That was made by man that you can see. Give me an example. You can see light. Uh huh. You can see chairs. What can you see? Uh huh. You can see the decoration. You can see the microphone in my hand. Anything you can see with your hand, somebody started it. Am I communicating? Somebody believed this thing can be done. Somebody thought of it, it has not been. It's not existing. And somebody came up with the mindset, with that belief that I can, I can, I can. And I declare to you, that good thought in you, you will. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. The man that made lights, the bomb, 
He got to a point, he has seen all kinds of life. But then he came to a point in his life and said, I am made for more. I can do better than this. I can leave a legacy for generations to come. And he began to walk. He failed the first time. The second time, some people said he tried up to 2,000 times before he could get it done. Eventually, he got it done. You will succeed. On one condition, if only you can believe, if only you will believe, do you know, right now, when you want to go from one point to the other, it's not just by going by taxi anymore. People just go on their phone, and what do they tell? They Uberize it. Or, or they lift it. Or different, somebody just, do you listen to this? The founder of Uber is a billionaire as we speak. But do you know that guy does not have a single car on the road picking anybody? All he needed was just faith, belief, reasoning and thinking. I can. I can. I can. And he did. And just by programming something, you own your car. You put gas into it yourself. Just by using that, uh, what do you call it now? App. App. Somebody here will be appointed for the next level in Jesus' name. The man is a billionaire. Your time has come. Jesus responding. In the book of Mark chapter 9 verse 23 said, the problem with humanity, the problem with believers, the problem with church people is, pay attention here, we pray too much and do too little. What did I just say? I'm not saying we shouldn't pray. But please pay attention here. Most of us are praying on nothing. Prayer works on nothing. Prayer works on something. Prayer works on faith. Prayer works on the trust. Prayer works on the action you are putting to work. Prayer works on something. The apostle told us. Apostle James. He said, faith without work is what? Is dead. I'm trying to challenge you to begin to think in your life, what can I do? What must I do? What should I do with my life? I am made for more. Made for more. And as I talk with you, I'm talking to myself. And maybe I should just share this with you. The little we've been able to do in the church, you know, for many years back, I have this philosophy in me. Anywhere I get to, the first thing is, appreciate what I met on the ground. And say to myself, it can be better than this. And I go to work with that mindset, and to God's glory, it has always been better. Your life will be better. Your family will be better. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If only you can believe. If only you can believe. Just imagine it. You know what? It's so bad that if you imagine evil thing, that evil thing will happen. So, why don't you flip it around? And imagine something good and begin to walk towards it. Don't just stay there praying alone. You are praying and walking at the same time. And you see what the Lord will do in Jesus' name. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I say unto you. Therefore, I say unto everyone hearing today. Therefore, I say unto you. What things soever you desire when you pray. You desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. 
I need a better one. And God looked at humanity and said in Genesis chapter 18 verse 14, Is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for the Lord? And God looked at, uh, what's the mama's name? Sarah. And said, Mama Sarah. Of course to God, Sarah was a daughter. How old are you? <laughs> God, why are you bothered about my age? When I needed you, they didn't show up. And God said, Sarah, shut up your mouth. I am never late. Is somebody listening to me today? I don't care what stage of life you may be. God is not late. You will be who he has ordained for you to be. And God said, by this time next year, Sarah, yes, you have passed the time of sin. Whatever women used to see that gives hope and assurance and expectation of a better life, a better future, and having children. But Sarah, I made the heavens and the earth. I created all things, the light and the day, the, 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 the up and the down. By this time next year, you will see. Is anybody catching that? By this time next year. By this time next year. I don't know who I'm talking to. But the Lord is saying, by this time next year, somebody will have a testimony. You know, sometimes ago I was ministering here. And just like I'm preaching like this. And trust me, what I just said, no, I didn't pre-plan it. But as I said it, and the Lord minister, there is somebody here. This time next year, you will have your miracle. Yeah. And I said, there is somebody here, you were fired from your job. Fired. But the Lord is saying, go back to that same place. Because he has done it already. It doesn't make sense. They fired you for whatsoever. And they didn't call you. You are the one that has to go and say, and God said, go back. And somebody here said, that is for me. Amen. I didn't know he was fired. But the word of knowledge came. He didn't come to me and say, pastor, that sounds like you were talking to me. I didn't know anything. He took it. He ran with it. He went back to his place of work and they said, where have you been? We have been looking for you. Listen to this. Where you have been rejected, they begin to search for you. In the name of Jesus. Don't you understand? Even Paul the Apostle didn't want to work with John Mark for whatever reason. But John Mark will not give up on himself. And he got to a point later on, Paul said, Bring John Mark because he's profitable unto me. You'll be a generational blessing. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 41. The 10th verse. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Listen to this. In the beginning, God created man to rule, to reign, and to live in abundance. But the entrance of sin changed the course of nature, the course of humanity. Ever since sin came in, man has been living in limitations, living in lacks, losses, and a lot has happened to man since then. This is the way I pour it. You must have heard me say this before. You've been here for a while. I said, if you like, you can write it down. God formed. Satan deformed. Religion reformed. Education informed. But Christ Jesus came and transform. You want me to repeat it? God formed. 
who deformed. Through what? Through sin. And then religion came. You know religion. Some came with religion and say you must not wear shoe. Religion. Some with religion, you must only wear white. Religion. Some with religion, you must not wear clothes. With religion, you must have your hair shaven. With only one something in the middle. Hare Krishna people. All kinds of things religion has brought. Religion only reforms us. Reshapes us from what God made us to be to what religion wants us to be. This is how you must pray. That is how you must pray. Religion. And then education came and gives us information. And you know, according to people, we are now in the age of information. And that is destroying many people. Technological information. Information technology. But Jesus said, get rid of all those. He came and then transformed man. Be ye therefore transformed, Romans chapter 12, by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Jesus came to set the captive free. To set them free from chains, shackles, and the fetters of the enemy. Fetters of affliction, fetters of oppression, Fetters of limitation, fetters of defeat, fetters of death, fetters of delay, fetters of lacks. Jesus came to set us free from them all, and you will be free. He came to restore man to their original place of authority and power. To rule, to reign, and to have dominion. It will happen in your life in Jesus' name. You know, he said, behold, I give unto you power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every part of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Whenever there is a cause in the life of a man, his whole life becomes a life of struggle. Life of struggle. It becomes a life of lacks and of limitation. And you are listening to this so that you don't just be a Christian, a suffering Christian. A suffering Christian, please permit me. I want to speak in a special English. Amen. I met somebody years back. And then, looking at situation and circumstances, <laughs> he looked at me and he said, It go better, not it go te. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, My own, no go te. How about your own? <laughs> Turn to her and say, my own, no good tea. It means it will be all right, it will be okay. Things will get better, only it will take long. My own blessing will not take long. My own prosperity will not take long. When will it be? I said, when will it be? Now. Now, now, believe it for yourself. Claim it by faith, and you will see things turn around in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes when we say some of these things, people think we, we just try to motivate you. Well, if you look at it that way, but we're building up your faith. And we are telling you that all the things are possible, and it shall be so in your life in Jesus' name. Remember, you were made for more than who you are right now. More than who you are right now. You have the ability and the potential to mount up with wings as eagle. You can be richer. You can be happier. You can be better. If only you will shun mediocrity. If you will shun lethargy, laziness, hopelessness, and understand. It doesn't matter what your age may be right now. Moses was called at the age of 80. He succeeded. Somebody here will succeed. In the name of Jesus. Have I given you the first point? Point one. Amen? Point one. 
reality of limitation. When you cannot do more, it means you are limited. It means you are hindered. Understand that when there is limitation, it is a sign of hardship and difficulty, hindrances and obstacles. And the impossibilities are evidences of incapability. Impossibilities are evidences of powerlessness and hopelessness. They are the aftermath of limitation, failures, challenges and problems in life. And that can be in your area of marriage, area of ministry, area of education, area of job, area of finances, whatsoever area, area of spiritual life. Don't you know there are people that spiritually, their life is epileptic. They can't do much, but the Lord is bringing deliverance in Jesus' name. Whatever is holding you back, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, with men this is impossible. You look at your past, your history, your record, and you see it's impossible. But the Bible says with God, all things are possible. And I'm here to tell you today, all things will be possible to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God created you to live an unlimited life. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man our own image, in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Stop right there. Before I get to verse 28. What was the last statement I read? Can you read it for me? Can you say it one more time? Pay attention here. Pay attention here. It doesn't matter whether you are a male or a female. You can be great. It doesn't matter whether you are black or white. You can be great. And it's going to be your choice. Going to be your choice. You know, there are people in this country that always talk about they enslaved us. They brought us from Africa. We are slaves. Hello. They didn't bring you from Africa. They perhaps brought your grand, great, great grandparents they came as slaves. You can make yourself slave owner. Somebody just means that. You can be a slave master. You don't have to remain a slave for the rest of your life. You can turn the table around. You can take charge and take authority. Don't have that slave mentality. Grasshopper mentality. Get rid of that. Say to yourself, this is my time. This is my hour. My fathers and great grandparents may not have this opportunity. But I have it. And I will make the best use of it. Male and female created he them. You know, there was a time that whether you are white or black, women, Cannot do certain things in this country. You know, there was a time that blacks cannot vote in this country. I'll get to all those momentarily. But just understand, especially you women, and I thank God there are women that are stepping into their shoes right now. You know, I discovered that more women are going to school than men now. So if you're a man, you are still sitting down there. Gone were the days when men were the ones just feeding the family. If you waste time, your wife will, may become your boss at home. Amen? So men, get up, go walk. And women, forget about this slavery mentality. I'm a woman and a woman. Listen to this. Even in the Bible days, women 
were made presidents of a nation. Bible days. At least we can talk about Deborah. She was the ruler over the whole nation. Who appointed Deborah? Some women are not sure. It wasn't democracy that time. She didn't get more votes to get in there. God appointed her. God has planned for your life. Amen. Verse 28, both the male and the female, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, to who right now? Tell me now. I can hear you. Who is God talking to? Both the male and the female, God blessed them. And God said unto them, not only to the man, be fruitful. Somebody will be fruitful. Amen. And multiply. And replenish the earth. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. Which is upon the face of all the earth. And every tree in the which is the fruit of three yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. But you know, sin took this away from man. Righteousness will restore it back unto you in Jesus' name. Reality of limitation. I told you that women factor was an issue. Women cannot vote for so many years. Even in the Bible days, women were considered a second class citizen. Not to be reckoned with. To be seen, but never to be heard. Listen to this. Your voices will be heard on the mountain. Amen. Your voices will sound loud in the high places in Jesus' name. Whether you're a man or you're a woman, you were made for more. More than who you are, more than what you are doing. You were made for more. You know, when they counted the people at the time of Jesus Christ, they said Jesus fed 5,000 people. And then, not including women and children. They are not to be counted. Huh. From now going forward, you will be counted. When they are counting the elites of the land, you will be in their number. When they are counting the CEOs in this nation, you will be among them. I tell you about the race factor that limits people. And there are people that are still burdened with that mentality. Because I am black. Do I tell you something? I am happy I am black. I don't know about you. If you are not happy about your color, there are some chemicals. We have a chemist here. He's going to tell you the chemical to use to go and bleach your skin. And then you can't go under the sun anymore. Amen? If you don't know by virtue of you being black, there are some resistance that God has built in you. That certain sicknesses and diseases cannot just get to you. Amen? Don't you know some people that are not black when the sun is shining? They try to go under the sun to tan themselves. What you got for free, they are trying to get it by force. Race factor. Be happy with yourself. And never limit yourself because of your race. Because of my accent. What happened to, my, to your accent? Get rid of that mentality. Did I tell you my story before? My accent story. Did I tell you before? 1996 or 97. I was in Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Where did I say I was? Oh, uh, if it were those days. When I was having trouble, I would have said, Alana, Alanda, Alara. And yet, you will never get it right. Inferiority complex. <laughs> Somebody say Atlanta. <laughs> Sand it out. And so I went to school. I wanted to do 
accent reduction. Some of you are still laughing at me. I'm making fun of myself so that you can deliver yourself. That you are good the way you are. Tell somebody, I am authentic. I am real. I am genuine. I wasn't born Caucasian. Why should I want to speak like a Caucasian? Amen. You weren't born here, yeah, man. Where do you want to hear, man, yourself? Yeah, man. The Lord will deliver us. Inferiority complex. And so I went to this school to go and register for English class. And they gave me a test. And within a few minutes, I finished the test. I returned it back. And the lady was wondering. It takes longer than this. Does he know what he's doing? And then he picked it up. He looked at it. And I got 100%. And then she said, she put the paper down and said, Sir, I'm sorry. I think I got you wrong. What exactly did you say you want? I said for English. <laughs> she said, this is the exam we give to everybody. To determine their level. And you got 100%. It was that I said, I'm sorry. I am a minister. I came for accent reduction. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. And then the lady, white lady, praise God. And she said, I'm sorry, but you speak good English. Huh. I was looking at her. It was then she told me that even they themselves white, that is not every time they understand themselves. Are you listening to me? She said, I think she said last week or maybe two weeks ago, she was somewhere and another white person like herself was talking and she couldn't put together what the person was talking about. She said, sir, I can hear you clearly and you speak good, correct English. Amen? Amen? So I left the place. But disappointed. Why? I couldn't reduce my accent. Accent reduction. So I went to the library over there. And then I got some materials, books, and those days it is cassette. It's not CD. Accent reduction. You listen to it, you do the book work, you listen again, say it this way, say it that way, and then I was very happy. And uh, <laughs> I would say some things and I would twist my tongue a little bit. <laughs> and I thought I was doing well. And then now I could go preach in American accent. Amen. For God so love the world. Can you hear me now? <laughs> and one day, somebody say one day. The woman I told you last week that said she won't die of cancer and refused to die of cancer. One day she called me and said, Pastor. I said, yes, Mama Z. She said, you know what? When you preach, I used to understand you. But now I can't understand again. <laughs> when I was speaking my original African English, British English, she understood everything. Now that I am Americanized, the American doesn't understand. I didn't know I was making fun of myself. Tell somebody, stop making fun of yourself. When the woman told me that she couldn't understand what I was preaching again, then I feel now more, I felt more disappointed in myself now. So I pack all the cassettes, the books and everything, I return back to the library. Then I said, I am delivered. 
And then I came back with my original accent again. <laughs> and people were blessed. Through you, people will be blessed. Inferiority complex. That's what is limiting many of us. Many of us. Limiting us. Feel free. You know, many of us are bound within. It's not so much what is happening around us. You feel that way, you think that way, you act that way, you live that way, you eat that way, you sleep that way. Rejected and dejected. You are free. Amen. When you see somebody going through systemic failure in business, systemic failure in education, in ministry, in marriage, is an evidence of limitation. When you see delay in childbirth, delay in marriage, delay in employment, delay in promotion, is an evidence of limitation in your life. Something is trying to limit you. Something is working against you. When you suddenly realize that wherever you are, they unjustly remove you from your elevated position. Something is trying to limit you. Have you not heard of some people? They say they are generals in the army. Three-star general, four-star general. And one little thing will happen and then they will demote them. You will not be demoted. When you begin to see some unexplainable behaviors in your life that often leads to embarrassment, to shame, disgrace, demotion, Discipline or rejection is a sign of limitation. You can tell yourself, I'm better than this. I am made for more. Made for more. You see your spiritual life stagnated? And you feel comfortable with that? No. You say to yourself, I am made for more. And it will happen. In the name of Jesus. Those are evidences and realities of it. But what causes this since I told you some of them already? Reasons. Unbelief. You don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in your own ability. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in the power of God in you. You don't believe in the grace of God in you. You don't believe you can get to that position. You know, some of you have concluded within you that certain position is meant for certain people. Yes, I agree with you. Those positions are meant for people like me. Amen. You know that is a song we always sing. Let those who will stay in Egypt land. How about me? I am bound for Canaan. Say in the name of Jesus. I am bound for Canaan. I am bound for progress. I am bound for promotion. I am bound for elevation. In the name of Jesus. I told you about ignorance. Hosea tells us in the fourth chapter, verse 6, it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because thou hast rejected knowledge, and all this that I say, some people will just say, well, don't mind them. I'm free to reject it. God says, I will also reject thee. That thou should be no priest to me. Pay attention. The priests are the leaders. Religious leaders of the land. And God is saying, if you reject this knowledge coming across, you will never amount to anything. He says, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. You see what I told you about generational blessing, generational cause. These people are the sinners and the offenders, disbelieving God. And God is saying, I will forget you and forget who? The children. The children. So, think right and act right, and the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. I told you about iniquity. It's a cause. That is a reason for limitation in the life of a man. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Remember I told you about the sons of Eli last week? They sinned against God. Pay attention. Their father did little to nothing about it. Parents, the Lord is speaking to you. You don't want to limit your life, your children, your family, your generation. Do something about it. Your children may think you hate them now. 
Then we come to understand later on and appreciate you for it. Correct them when it is possible, when it is not too late. God said to Samuel to tell Ella, he said, have I said your family will be before me as priests forever? He said, be that from me. Be that from me. The Lord will help us. The Lord did not only say, be that from him. He also cut short their life. Their lives became limited. Your life will not be limited. In the name of Jesus. What was the problem of Saul? Saul became limited because of sin and transgression as well. Uzzah's life was cut short because of sin and transgression. He took things of God for granted. He dabbled into what he's supposed not to dabble into. He touched the ark. There was somebody I was to tell you last week. Micah, David's wife, sin. You know what got Micah into problem? I made her to be a uniquely caused woman in the whole of the scripture. Micah was deplorable. Micah disrespected her husband who doubles as not just a king but a man of God. She spoke roughly to the man and God had it. And the Bible says, because of that thing, Micah became barren for the rest of her life. And barrenness can come in different and diverse ways. Women, please pay attention to this. I told us God created us all together. Amen? There is equality. But at the same time, God decided to put man to be the head. Honor your head. If anything is wrong with the head, the whole body will be sick. Be careful what you say, how you say that. Don't talk like one of the unbelievers, the godless people. Maybe some of you, because now you have a good job, you're making good money, your husband is like a piece of cake. Some of you, because you are now in a country whereby women are elevated and promoted in every situation, then you also relegate the word of God, the Bible, to the background. Be careful. Be careful. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Micah put herself into trouble. You will not put yourself into trouble in Jesus' name. The pastors in Israel came under cause and limitation because they did or they were doing the work of the Lord deceitfully. This is where I'm going. You are a worker in the church. Or maybe you are even a worker outside of the church, in the secular. Wherever you find yourself as a child of God, please be faithful and be loyal. Be diligent in everything that you do. Look at it in Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 10. So it doesn't matter whether you're a pastor or you're a peer member. It says, Cause be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. And cause be he that keepeth back his word from blood. What you're supposed to correct, you didn't correct. Eli did that and got into trouble. What you're supposed to chastise as a leader, you head back from chastising. And God so that there is a time to hold the sword, there is a time to drop the sword. You should wisely know when to do what. Not that alone, people are limited because of indiscipline. 
They are not disciplined in what they eat, in what they drink, in their prayer life. In discipline. Anything goes, everything goes. They are not disciplined in the way or manner they use their tongue. In discipline. And some have talked themselves into trouble and to problem. I told you last week, there are some prayers you don't pray in the public. Amen? There are some prayers you don't pray just anyhow. The Bible actually says you want to pray personally, not about corporate prayer now, but individually, personally, you go into your closet. You talk to your God. And your heavenly Father you talk to in secret will hear you and answer you openly. Openly. You don't go to your house and see every demon in this house. Every devil in this house. And you know you're talking to somebody. And the person knows you are talking. And the person say, huh, I will show you pepper. You think your husband is tough and hard. And then you want to talk to God about your husband. I say, oh God, this man that will not give me peace. Take his peace away. And the man will say, okay. Amen. You say God should take my peace away, right? So I have no peace. Then you too. You know, what I have is what I'll give you. Am I communicating? And so the man becomes more difficult and more terrible. Be careful in the use of your tongue. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Some people, that is how they limit themselves. Some, it is on their job. The way they talk to their colleagues, the way they talk to their leader, is what brings about their limitation. Pride and disrespect for authority brings about limitation in some people. Not that alone, there are some that are wicked in the way and manner they handle other people. But the Lord is saying, if you understand the fact that you are made for more, you will examine yourself. Amen? And then you take care of all these things in Jesus' name. How can you be delivered? How can you be released from limitation? How can you do more? Please pay attention here. Many a times we are trying to pray. The first thing we always think about is devil, demon, evil spirits, evil power. Can I do you a favor? For goodness sake, look away from all those for a minute. Amen? Look at all the prayers of the apostles and the prophets. Look away from all of those. Look inward into yourself. What in me is hindering my prayer? What in me is hindering my blessing? What in me is limiting me? And deal with those things. And I help somebody here. Please understand, I'm not saying there are no devils or demons. We war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Against the rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. I understand that. But before we get to that level, do a self-examination first. Thorough examination. Examine, is there any sin or iniquity in my life? Before you download everything on the devil, check up yourself, check up your life. My prayer life, my Christian life, my relationship with other people. What is wrong in me that needs to be fixed? Understand, pay attention here. The Bible says, if the way of a man please the Lord, somebody help me. He will make his enemies to be at peace with him. The Bible says, if God be for us, somebody help me here, who can be against us? Nobody. Nobody. If you're a real child of God, we are surrounded by the wall of fire. 
The angels of God encamp round about them that fear the Lord. Examine yourself, examine your life. If you really want to be released, don't pray. Oh my goodness. Excuse the language. This religious prayer that everybody is praying today is the devil, is the demon, is the demon, is the devil. Don't transfer your responsibility to something else that is not real. Was it last week I told you? Can't remember. The devil doesn't work in isolation. Through who does he walk? Through human being. When you told a lie like the Gibeonites, and the judgment is coming, and you are saying the demons and the devil and the witches and the wizards, they are not there. Who then are the devils and the demons? You, the liar. What's the meaning of the devil? Somebody help me here. What's the meaning of devil? D E V I L. Am I right? Remove the D from devil. What do you have? So separate the two and then say it for me one by one. The evil. Anything evil you do is the evil. The evil thing. The evil behavior. The evil conduct. The evil character. The evil language, the evil sin, deal with all those. And then the Lord is saying, I am with you always. And if he's with us always, if God be for us, who can be against us? I just want our mentality to change. If you really want to do more in life. Stop blaming the devil. You were supposed to go to school. You were busy playing stuff. Games on the internet all along. Till the middle of the night. Watching pornography. All till the middle of the night. And then you say, it's the devil. No, it's the evil thing you are doing. The rebellion. The disobedience. Those are the evil things you are doing. Don't blame any devil or demon anywhere. When you are done with your parts and then you pray to the Lord, the Lord will make a way for you in Jesus' name. So, then what do you do? Desire a change, a new level. That's how we sang that song. Oh Lord, I am tired of this level. Your spiritual level. Every kind of level you find yourself. Economic level, matrimonial level. Stop passing the buck. Stop blaming all that for, for, for your mischief and your calamity. Take responsibility. Make up your mind. Desire a change. Decide a change. Determine for a change. A change for a difference. And then, with that desire, decision, and determination. You then look into what are the areas of my life that I'm limited. Realization of limitations and their causes. And then repent of the areas you know you are wrong. You know, the way I'm talking is not like most of all these deliverance and demonologies that we just tell you this one is in your family, that one is in your family. You blame everybody, you blame everything but yourself. But yourself. But yourself. Tell somebody look inward. Tell somebody look inward. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. I was somewhere yesterday. And the person was talking about her in-laws are good at that. And I said, hey, stop that. Your in-laws are not just good. Your in-laws are good because you are good. Am I communicating? I said it because you are good. They are not here right now. No matter who they are, if you behave bad to them, what you sow is, is what you will reap. 
And then she said, Pastor, you are right. She said, when I was in school, in the college, some of my mates were already saying that uh, when they get married, they will show their in-law Pepe. She said, now she remember. I said, you see what I'm talking about? They don't even know who they were going to marry. They don't know who the in-law is going to be, but they are already saying, <laughs> when I get there, they better pray to even get there. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. There's somebody looking inward. Whether as a man or as a woman, you look inward. On your job, remember the other job. What happened to you before you left the job? This one, what is happening right there? You say, is the devil and demon on that job, right? Those devils and demons, did they relocate to this other job? Who relocated? You are the one that relocated. You are the one that is carrying from here to there. There's somebody looking world. If you're really going to be free from limitation, looking world. Looking world. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And then repent. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will, help me, heal their land, heal their life, heal their marriage, heal their finances, heal their business, heal their ministry. You know, some pastors are bound and they don't know it. And they don't know it. And they think it's all about ministry, ministry, ministry. Looking world. Some pastor's wives are bound. Looking world. Some workers are bound. Looking world. You were made for more. You can do better. You can be better. You can live better. And you will be better. If you're going to be free, you need faith in God. Faith in God. Mark eleven twenty two, And Jesus answered said unto them, have faith in God. Believe you can and you will. For verily I say unto you that whosoever 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 shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Look up here, please. No. I'm slowing down the way I minister today so I can really get across to you. Get across to you. Look at that passage again. The Bible says, whosoever. What does that mean? Pay attention here. Talking about whatever you desire. Pay attention here. If you are limited, you don't put it on God. God is the one that put me this way. No, it's not God. It's not God. The devil is the one that conditioned me this way. No, it's not the devil either. You are the author and the maker and the prophet and the priest of your own life. It's what you sow that you will reap. You sow joy into the lives of others, you reap joy. You sow happiness, you reap happiness. But look at it. I told you before that you must desire what you want. You must decide exactly what you want and determine for it. Come back to this chapter we read, Mark 11. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever... That means whether you're a man or woman, whosoever, whether you're old or young, whosoever, whether you're a pastor or a pew member, whosoever, it doesn't matter your position or your title, whosoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, 
Move. What will happen to the mountain? Every mountain in your life will move. Verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. Did you get that? So the question is, what do you desire? What do you desire? If I were you, I'll get my pen and paper from today and begin to pen down what I desire. So I don't forget. Sometimes you are thinking of, before, thinking of something before you know it. Some other things have th happened and then you forgot about what you were thinking about. Pen them down. Go after them. In righteousness and holiness. It will happen. The next thing is faithfulness and obedience. Faithfulness. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithfulness. Luke 19, 17. And he said unto him, Well done, thou good servant. Good servant. Because thou hast been faithful in a very little thing, have thou authority over ten cities. Can you see? Faithfulness in little will mean promotion into much. You want to be free? Then you pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Philippians 2.10 That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. And everything in heaven and on earth and things underneath the earth will bow in Jesus' name. When you pray, pray with the blood of Jesus. Pray with the blood of Jesus. Take authority. Through the blood of Jesus. You don't need to do any special thing. A ritual. Bring water. Bring oil. Bring handkerchief. What else do they bring? Bring candle. White candle. Green candle. And please understand... It doesn't matter whether you are African or American. They do all these things even here. I've seen people do stuff here. The Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. You don't need any incense. You know I heard of a particular deeper lifer in one of the locations that was sending money to another prophet in another country to pray for her. And I say, you are deceived. You are deceived. You are deceived. If we are here, you have seen God work miracle. Heal the sick. Deliver the oppressed. Set free the captives. And you are still looking for something else. See vision for me. Of course, you can tell those are not deeper life members. They just straight in. And if they don't repent, they will stray out. And in the end, an amen to that. Amen. Or you want false doctrine to stay here with us? No, we don't want false doctrine. We want people that will just hold on to God and God alone. Not God with something else. No. Not God with something else. Maybe you don't understand. Maybe some of you have heard it. There are people that get their power from some other evil spirits and powers. And then when they do hand like this, everybody falls this way. They do hand like this, everybody falls this way. They get the power for pulling crowd. 
they also pay a price for it. They pay a price for it. There is one on the internet that says he, 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 that uh, he prayed and the dead came back to life. And somebody said, I was there. No dead person came to life. Actually, the man was telling that his wife was there in South Africa, where it happened. He was just telling me in Kingston two days ago that his wife was there. That is a lie. And you believe all those lies. And then those are the messages you listen to all your life. Release yourself. Amen. Amen. Your bondage is on the inside. Once you are bound with them, you feel bound. They have worked on your brain. They will have worked on your heart. All you believe is, I am bound, I am bound, I am bound. You don't understand the power of confession. You remain bound for life. You remain limited. Release yourself. I say release yourself. And say to yourself, I am moving forward. And you move forward in Jesus' name. Use the word of God. Use the word of God in every situation. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. We are going to pray now. But please understand. Please understand. You want to get rid of fear from your life. You are not going to begin to pray about devil, demon, and everything. You want to release yourself from limitation, from bonds, from yokes that you put yourself into. Let me help you here. Let me help you here. Please look up. Do you know an average white boy is raised to believe he's better and superior to an average black person? And when they talk, when they act, when they do, do things, they do it that way. They don't need any manipulation or concussion. They just believe that and they act that way. They talk that way. Retrain yourself. Are we together? Retrain yourself. Retrain yourself. I told you this story years back. How many years back? I don't remember, but I will tell you again. I think it was in the 90s too, we were at the airport to receive a family member coming from Africa. And while we were there at the international, what do they call it now? Reception place, where you wait for new arrivals. We sat down there, and then we had a daughter then that was just I think a little over one year old. And then she has her older sister. Still our child. And then while we were there, children were there playing. And here comes this white boy. And was harassing my big daughter. When I say big daughter, the one bigger than the smaller one. And that one ran back to the mother. And my daughter became limited. She couldn't go far. Because as soon as she sees that boy terrifying her life, she runs back. We thought it was just a child's stop. And then the smaller one that was just a year plus, maybe almost two years, I don't remember now, just got herself down. She saw what was going on. I'm telling you, you do something about your life. And so this smaller one got herself, struggled, got herself down from the hand of my wife and then walk majestically towards that boy. And as soon as she got to the boy, she just said, hey! And the boy ran. You are going to get down right now. You are going to walk majestically. You're going to walk to your sister and say, hey! And your situation will live right upon your face. Enough is enough. 
You are more than who you are. You can do better than what you are doing. You are somebody. You were made for honor and glory. You are not a slave. Banish fear. You will make it. You will succeed. You will prosper. You will pass that examination. You will get that promotion. You will get that job. You will have that peace. I call Pastor Charles Bar to come lead us in prayer this time. Work on yourself, work on yourself, work on yourself. If you don't believe